Hey gamers, it's Wintermute here from Grind This Game, back with Oxygen Not Included. And I was watching uh, one of my favorite streamers today. Uh, his name's Life Grow, Life Groski. Uh, he's got a YouTube channel, but he's mainly uh, streams on Twitch. And he he plays a lot of Oxygen Not Included, and he makes some pretty awesome bases. So I was in there watching him today, and I saw a couple of things. I've seen. Well, I'll explain the first thing first. <laughs> And then the second thing, second. Um, the first thing I've seen in previous bases is this contraption here. Now, this isn't exactly how he made it, but it is using the principles. His was a little bit uh, different configuration, but this is pretty much it. So what he's done is he... The reason airflow tiles are here is because they're unbreakable, so it can hold any amount of pressure. That's the first thing, which is... Not really an exploit, but maybe an exploit. I don't know. Um, the game allows it, so maybe it's allowed. The second pr principle here is that you go in and you dribble in a little bit of oil or a different liquid other than the liquid that you want to store in here. So before I close this off, there is a bottle emptier and I dribbled a little bit of oil in here. And, what, and then you start pumping in the liquid that you want to compress and store. So I've got, as you can see, 5,000 kilograms of liquid in some tiles here. In the top left, we've got 4,000. Now, normally you can only hit, fit uh, 999 uh, kilograms of uh, liquid in a tile before it starts to expand out. And usually, if you have a vent like this, it uh, it doesn't allow any more liquid in if it's covered by liquid. But it's tricking it because there's some oil on the bottom here. 400 kilograms of oil, so it thinks that there's uh, a valid amount of oil there, so it just keeps on pumping. Uh, and because it be, and because like a liquid can't uh, occupy the same tile at the same time, two liquids, uh, the polluted water just kind of goes up and gets smushed in here and compressed. So a pretty cool concept. I haven't used these in the past because I think they're an exploit, but I thought I would use it because I have... <laughs> I've got this problem right here. <laughs> of, of too much water. Way too much water. And we could just cap off the geyser and do some automation to only let water in. But I thought I'd try this out and show you, the, you guys this. But credit goes to Lefgroski. I'll put a link to his Switch stream in, in, my, in the description. Uh, and his YouTube as well. He kind of archives his streams on YouTube and also has a few uh, guides on there. So thanks LifeGrow for that uh, cool thing. I don't know if he came up with it, but he definitely uses it. There's a similar principle I think you can do for gases. You can trick the gas vent into thinking that it's not overpressurized with a little dribble of liquid. And then you can pump an infinite amount of gas into a room. So let me know if you think this is too cheaty. I think it's just a nice way to contain a bunch of liquid. I mean, we could use liquid containers, but it would kind of take up a lot of space. And the dog is barking. It's the neighbor's dog. I think it knows when I'm streaming and then it, or recording, and then it, it likes to bark. Uh, what else did I do? I added a, another bedroom here, I think. I can't remember if I had all plastic be beds last time, but we're all plastic beds now. And we set up uh, these, uh, what are they called? Jet suits? I always want to call them jet packs, but... There's one thing crazy though, that, like I was talking about last episode, the lag. If you look at under here, show navigation, you can see the pathing, the potential pathing that they'll take. So it's everywhere in this area, which is pretty crazy like you can see it has to do all these calculations in terms of where it can go and where it wants to go so that's why I lost a lot of frames per second when I built this out if you contain them to a small area it's probably not as bad like if I if I lock them out of here for now I mean it's gonna reduce the pathing and I should probably lock them out of here basically where you don't want them to dig if you want to save a little bit of uh, frames per second, a little bit of performance. You can just kind of 
con constrain them where they can go. So for now, I'll just I'll put these in just to block them from here. We really want them just to dig in here, and I'm doing a low low priority dig in here. Now, I did an experiment. I thought I would try to have the dupes that are at the top of the map right here. I was going to see what happens if they're in an exosuit already and they come along here and they try to go into a jet suit. What I thought they would do is drop their exosuit, get in their jet suit, and then go up and do their stuff, come back down, take off their jet suit, and then I guess there's no exosuit dock, so I'm not really sure what they would do. But what they end up doing, uh, after I did this test, is they they come up here, they leave their exosuit on, and they go past the jet suit dock, and they go up here. And, w and when they come back, they drop their exosuit on the floor, and they just walk by the jet suit. So it's kind of one or the other. You can't use them in combination. So I will probably uh, maybe get rid of this, or maybe I'll allow them to use jet suits, because... It's much easier to build all this stuff up in space, especially up here if they can fly around. But the only issue is that they can go they can go pretty much everywhere, so the pathing is going to cause major performance issues. So maybe I won't use them. They can get around pretty fast in their exosuits, but the jet suits are actually kind of slow for them to move around. So I already had the petroleum here and I already had the oxygen here, so I thought I'd try it out. But if I was going to use them, what I would probably do is actually take out these exosuit docks, allow them to go up, and then or turn this into jet suits so they could just get get everywhere. But I think the performance would be absolutely dreadful. Uh, the other thing I saw Life Groski doing was okay. This is all messed up now. <laughs> is uh. Taking advantage of this property, where you can build stuff on a door, but then uh, you can actually open the door. So the idea here, and he's done this on, on the top of his base for scanners, is that meter shower comes in, so you close the doors, regolith gets stuck on top, meter shower ends, the regolith falls down onto the door, you open the door temporarily, let the regolith fall through, and then the rubble miner well, open the door, let the regolith fall, close the door, and then both of these start working again. But he actually linked to some automation, or there's some automation diagrams in his uh, Discord that I uh, checked out, and I couldn't make heads or tails out of it. And it all assumed that you had perfect scanner, uh, perfect scanner uh, network quality, which is, let's just check this one over here. Network, yeah, as long as the scan quality was to, uh, 100%, then all the delays and stuff that was set up in the automation, and this is not the automation, I tried it out, but I couldn't get it to work, so. The nice thing about this, doing it this way, is you can kind of maximize your solar panels, because underneath this these glass panels, you could do solar. And actually, you would still lose... You'd still lose two, lose two tiles of sunlight. So maybe it's not so bad the way I'm doing it over here. I do have to redo this door though. I should have... This is the pattern I'm using now. So two doors, two bunker tiles, two doors. And this is working nicely. We are not using... We're, we're losing a little bit of light in between each solar panel. So we're not... Kind of, it's not perfect, but it's pretty good. It's what I could think of, so... What I might do here is take out this door, though. And just put in this this rubble miner upside down. I'm actually going to do that right now. So, door... Priority 9. Deconstruct. That means we're going to lose a little bit of power here. But we have tons of power, so... That's okay. And once that door is out, we'll replace it with bunker tile. Do that. Priority nine. Uh huh. Take out this rubble miner. So we'll lose a bit of sun. But going to the right here, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll repeat the pattern. 
and we should get a lot of solar panels in there. In fact, we could hook up the next one here. I've been just working my way across. It's pretty slow going. So we'll put it two over like that. It's based on the base. Base of the, uh, oh, am I three over? What's going on here? I think I might have messed that up. Oh, they're actually, they're only seven wide. I thought they're eight wide. What is happening? <laughs> Let me just double check that. So it is getting... Hmm. I think it was getting full power. Yeah, so I guess they're only seven wide. So I'll just stick that in to the right of this. Let me just make sure that's the same. Yeah. Yep. So we'll put it in right there. And we need ladders between them. Actually, they'll be able to reach that one. But then over here, we'll just have to put some ladders in. And how much power do I have on this line? 1.2. We can keep feeding the power across. Into these doors. That should be okay. We want our Robo Miner first. So we'll get rid of that. It always feels like I'm paused, but I'm not. Because there's no... There's no, uh... There's no music and you can't see anything moving. Okay. I'm going to tear all this apart. Because <laughs> I'm not actually going to use it. I was just... It was just me experimenting. Let's get rid of these. And... These doors I'm just going to leave closed for now. And I don't need this automation here. This is just my flip flopper. I don't need that. Okay. Well, they can't reach this now. <laughs> Oops. Now, there's another bug I en encountered, and that was with the rocket. When the rocket landed on regolith, it kind of crushed it, but it left behind a little bit of regolith that couldn't be dug out. Like, they would just try to dig it forever, which is really unfortunate. So I'm going to try to make sure I dig out the, uh, the regolith before I land the rocket. Unassigned. I thought Hank was in there. Yeah, so let's launch this rocket. It's going to take a while to get to the planet and back. We've been to that one. We've been to that one. Yeah, we've been to that one. Now we're just going to go to the rocky one out here. Launch that. Now I took out my space telescope because I didn't need it anymore because we're done we scanned all of the all of these asteroids and planets we've we scanned them all so we didn't I didn't think we needed it anymore but to open the star map you actually need one so I'm just gonna leave it there for now and leave the door closed because I don't want it overheating and stuff Probably make this priority six. I do it. Now I have a few other things going on down at the bottom here uh, to do with fish. And look at this. So between last, at uh, the beginning of last episode, or somewhere in last episode, I started feeding my fish, and I fed them for I don't know 20 cycles or so. So their populations, the population just grew like crazy. So I have enough Paku now, for sure. But due to the, uh, if you do show navigation, that one Paku has to do all these calculations and this one has to do all that same thing over and over. So this is probably contributing to a lot of lag as well. 
So what I thought about doing is stuffing them all in a tiny little room like this so they their pathing was like minimalized. Uh, but instead of putting them over here in this sad little place, I thought I'd put them in the base. I thought I'd make a little fish tank that everyone could see. I just have to figure out where I want to do it. I might do it in here somewhere. We could use a glass tile. It only really has to be one deep. So let's do window. I'll use glass. I'll put it over here by the... Let's see, actually the bottom can be glass. I want it too wide because I want a place to dump the fish in. Let's make sure we can fit this in first. Fish release. Uh, I think that'll work. We'll find out. And the feeder. Actually, I don't need the feeder. We have crazy population. So, window tile like that. Now, I need to get some liquid in there. And we do have a water pipe here somewhere. Yeah, I could just use this water pipe. Let's do that. And we'll... That's pretty hot water, so I'll use insulated. And what we'll do is just stick a vent at the bottom for now. Or do I want it at the top? Uh, we'll stick it at the bottom. I think we only need one tile of water. I think one will be sufficient here. The less space they have to move around, the better, because then they don't have that to path everywhere. So we'll try that. And actually, I really should build the glass before I build the uh, pipe because we'd have a bit of a nightmare if that was... <laughs> actually, let's do the vent last. Now, they don't hang around here very much, so the decor is not going to kind of spread out very far, but I thought it would be neat to put them in the base. So, allow all fish. Priority 7... There's something else that's really cool that I want to show you. And that's to do with fish traps. Check this out. If I put a fish trap in here... Now I always thought fish traps, they look like they float on the surface, so I've always been putting them on the surface. But they work underwater as well. In fact, they work better underwater. If you put them on the surface, none of my fish were going up. But if you put them underwater, they work just great. But, uh, watch what happens when this thing gets built. It's actually quite, it's quite funny. I never noticed this before. Come on, someone, come and build it. Don't need this feeder anymore. Don't need this. We got a lot of fish in here. I've seen some people build some crazy fish breeding farms. Okay, watch. Watch all the fish. <laughs> Look at them all. They all come to the trap. It's really, it's really quite crazy. And then they realize that the trap is full and they just kind of go about their business. But it's pretty funny that they all come to the trap. So I'm going to build a whole bunch of these because there's a lot of fish in here and I want to get them all out. So we'll do fish trap priority seven, kind of just all over the place. And we got to get rid of this fish drop off here. Don't want those going in there anymore. Actually, we could just do this for now, but we'll we'll get rid of that. Now these use up plastic, but that's okay, we got lots of plastic. In fact, I should put even more in because this is going to take a while to get them all out of here. Wish there was a... oops. That is not a fish trap. I should be able to build them... two over as well. So you can take it, you, the, the feeding, 
breeding farms that I've seen for fish other people do. Like, um, I'm gonna butcher his name, but uh, he's a YouTuber named Meals Match. He makes some cr pretty crazy bases. He makes a Paku farm where you breed, you feed one fish, it makes an egg, and then you kind of move the egg over to, into the the living tank. And what I, what I usually do though is just feed them for a while, increase their population numbers, and then I think they revert to wild and they go back to a state where they make one egg per life cycle. So they, so you basically feed them till you get to the number that you want, and then uh, stop feeding them, and it'll just maintain that population number. So they all got trapped here. Put some more traps in. Let's put them. All the way up here, and all the way up here. Let's go check out our fish farm here. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> I forgot to put the thing in. Uh, let's put that vent in. Stat. Oh, the poor fish. Don't die on me. I will give you life in a second. Oh, don't die. We got lots of them, but I don't like killing the fish. Now, because they're so close to the base, when they die, we're going to get shells. And we're... Well, that's probably going to be pretty hot water. That's okay. We're going to get shells, and I think we get meat from these guys when they die, so we're going to get quite a bit of food out of them. And hopefully the pathfinding lag doesn't I think it go I hope it'll go away when we reduce this number of places they can go. Okay, I think I'm killing these fish. Oh, now they can swim. Yay. This is going to be one stuffed aquarium. Now they're going to get overcrowded and glum, but they should still you know, survive. Let's check out the decor. Tropical Fry 75. Tropical Paku 125. Wow, the, the decor here is going to be insane. Oh my gosh, look at them all. <laughs> and let's check their navigation. Yeah, they can't go anywhere. I could stop right there, actually. I could stop right there. Hmm. I'm going to see if I can just let them survive like that. So we'll take out this bridge. And we'll see if they can just survive on, in that little driblet of water. That's insane. <laughs> uh, okay. Let's go chop some more. <laughs> Fun with fish. Okay, we got a few eggs left in here. Okay, they'll eventually get trapped. I think I'll put in a few more traps just for good measure for those eggs that are gonna pop out. So how's our infinite water storage going? Mm, it is up to, well, it's still at 5,000 kilograms. We'll eventually use that water for something. We could do the same thing with oil. I could show you how to build this with oil. Because we're going to drain all the oil out eventually. And hopefully I can do it this time without uh, messing it up. Okay, so we're taking oil up this way. Let's try to do a little infinite storage in here. It's going up at 88 degrees, so we probably don't want, we probably want to insulate it. So I'll build a little insulation room here out of ceramic, our best insulator. So I'll do the floor like that. And do that. Then we're gonna do airflow with gold.
Is that what I want? I can't remember. I gotta look at the other one here. So we got, we'll do three on one on the right and then two on the left. And they need a ladder to get up for now. Doesn't need to be priority nine. So we'll want to dribble a bit of water in there, I guess. Do I want to use water or petroleum? I could use petroleum. Yeah, we'll dribble a couple of bottles of petroleum in there. Let's sweep this up. I don't want any junk in there. What do we have here? We'll, we'll put a pump in there because we don't want to dismantle it later. Uh, gold amalgam, that should be good. I don't think it'll get any hotter than that. But let's just use steel, we have it. Might as well use it. I'll use conductive wire. Let's see here. Uh, I'll use conductive wire, but I won't connect it to anything. This will just be for extra oil. So half the oil will just refine and then the rest will store in our infinite storage. So we'll need some insulated. I'll use ceramic for this. Just to send that out like that. Be able to reach that, yeah. And then we can dribble a bit of petroleum. So let's do petroleum, priority seven, enable auto bottle. Oh, they got slime in there. Get that out of there. Okay, that was one bottle. We don't want a full tile, we don't want 999 kilograms, but we want maybe 400. 500, 600, somewhere in there. This is the second one of these I've ever built in my life, so hopefully it works. They're pretty cool. Infinite storage of liquids is nice. It's like a super compressor. You can do a similar thing with doors and automation timing to compress gas infinitely. So how much do we have now? 100, we'll wait for a bit more. I think in theory, like one gram of petroleum would be enough because two liquids can't occupy the same tile. But for some reason I want to go up to like 300, that should be good. Turn that off, we can actually remove it now. And then we want insulated tiles going in. with a vent, like that. Now the oil will go in there, it can't occupy that tile, so it'll go up and bubble over to the side. Now, hopefully, hopefully I have left enough room here. Hmm. I think it'll work with this tiny amount of space. We'll find out. I need a ladder for them to get up and down. Uh, they won't be able to get over. I need more scaffolding for them to work. That should be good.
while they're building that last little bit, let's go see how our dig is going up here. Oh, they're still... Oh, now they're just like clearing up stuff. And food's been going up because I've been in here grabbing... Um, grabbing uh, slime and all, all the slime that we mined out. It's all been either put into the mushroom farm here, which is growing great crazy amounts of food, or it's been going in the algae distiller making algae, which we don't really need, but it doesn't hurt. The lag is quite bad. Oh, look at this now. Oh, it looks like the water spread out. Okay. So now their navigation... Let's just check this. Oh, they can't really go anywhere. How many are in there? Oh my gosh. Let's check the... <laughs> let's check the decor. Uh, 508. Wow. Five Paku. Two Tropical Fry. 11 Tropical Paku. Wow. Now, I can't remember if you get meat from these guys or not. Maybe you don't. Maybe you just get shells. Okay, the CO2 level is getting pretty high in the base. Way too high in the base. We need to pump that out of there. And I, I had a pump here doing it. But it kept getting stuck. Yeah, it keeps getting blocked by this. My typical merging methods for this just didn't work for some reason. I usually merge with two bridges and it was always getting backed up. So I'm just going to put... I'm going to dump it here and then it's going to suck it up. It's kind of a waste, but... Maybe off camera I'll try to get this working again. Usually when you have two bridges that fuse together, the outputs, uh, it works just fine, but it, for some reason it stopped working. But we definitely have to clear that CO2 out of there, because it's getting too high. Oh yeah, way too high. And the other thing I did was I put in a carbon skimmer here. That is taking water out of this giant tank, sieving it, and then... Actually, before it sieves it, it goes through this radiated pipe, radiant pipe, which just kind of cools down this area a little bit so that the carbon skimmer doesn't get too hot. Now, it's also getting water dribbled on it from above. That helps it cool down. Okay, this fish doesn't want to go in the trap. I mean, if I was a fish, I probably would not want to go in the trap either. How's our rocket doing? 31%. Oh, it's going to take a while. I also set up a slickster farm down at the bottom. Well, let's finish this off here. We'll go to the slickster farm after. Okay, is it okay to start pumping stuff in? I think it is. Yeah, let's do it. Feels like we're paused, but we're not. We'll use ceramic. We'll just branch off here. That should bubble up and over, and then we can just seal it up. And I hope it all fits and works. It should. We can make it higher than normal. Here's the slickster farm. It only has a few molten slicksters. Now, because traps melt at... Let's see here. These critter traps? They melt at 75. So I can't actually use them here because it's too hot. I tried right here, but it melted. So instead of trapping them, what I'm doing is I'm just grabbing their eggs and putting their eggs in here. Whenever I happen to see one and I haven't... They've all hatched, but... Well, once we see another egg, we'll stick it in there and these guys will start multiplying. And I'm not using them for... necessarily to make oil, because they're not very fast at making oil, or petroleum. I'm using them just to eat the CO2, because we have a lot of CO2. And I am, I am doing the carbon skimming up here, which is going to take out a lot of the volume of the CO2 out, but... Any excess 
should be eaten by the Slicksters. This grooming station, I should move to the right actually. Because it is uh, stations. It's too far for them to run, so we'll get rid of that one. I think it's probably safe to go in here, actually. It's 103 degrees, 92 here. As long as we make sure the sour gas doesn't get out, I think we could drain a lot of that oil down into here. What it'll do is I'll leak a little bit of it out. Oh, this is a bit of this light here. It's 246. That means it's kind of cooking this oil. They changed the way abyss light works. So if this abyss light down here that's 1600 degrees touches oil, the way it works now is that the temperature is kind of even out. So this abyss light that's 246, it should technically be evening out, but it doesn't seem to be. I'm not sure why. Yeah, we'll wait for some more eggs. Still got a lot of lag. Oh, wow. This is, I think this is working. Is that, what do we have in here? Petroleum, oh no, it failed. It didn't work. It totally failed. Okay. Well, that's no good. Maybe I didn't have enough room. Hmm. Not good, not good. And I, I'm, I kind of can't move it to the left anymore. Uh, without, if I want to put insulation in. <laughs> See, I go to show you guys and it doesn't work. Oh, well, maybe petroleum floats on top. Oh, that's it. Petroleum floats on top. So we need something to f that floats below crude oil for this to work. Or do it in reverse. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's why it's not working. Lesson learned. Let's cut off that pipe immediately. I'll have to figure out how I want to do this. Yep. Yeah, that's not going to work. It works with the water because the oil always sinks below the water. Oh, there's petroleum getting in there. Oh, well. <laughs> Can they get in there and out? Yep. So yeah, I think when actually I saw Lepkowski do oil as well, and I think he was doing it from the top. So we got a little bead of petroleum at the top. Yeah, I think he filled it with oil, got a little bead of petroleum by the top, and then squirted oil in into the one tile of petroleum. Yep, so we gotta kind of build it upside down. I wonder if I could figure it out on my own here. And I just realized the bottom, <laughs> I didn't even build the bottom with airflow, so this thing would have exploded. Anyway. Let's mop everything out of there. But they can't get down there. I want to move it all over to the right anyway. Actually, I think I can fit it all in. So yeah, we'll have to fill it with oil up to about this level. Make a little place for that to go. And then drip some petroleum on top 
and then put her event at the top. I think that's how it's going to work. Mm hmm. Yeah. I think that'll work. Oh, I like these little jerry cans. <laughs> they change the bottles. Okay, uh, oil. This ladder's actually in the way. Yeah, I'll fill this with oil. And then this pipe will actually go... Might as well build it straight out. Actually, <laughs> we want to put our pump here, I think. For when we want to get it out later on. What did I build that out of? Let's, let's do steel. We don't need steel, but just to be extra, extra safe. In case we get some molten oil in there. Gonna have to open this up. And then we'll dribble petroleum on the top once we get the oil level just right. I don't know if this will work. We'll find out. Something like that. I need to drop off that uh, oil and petroleum. Bottle empty or stick one right here. Make it out of ceramic. Oh, I learned something else new today from uh, Saturnus on the clay forums. He built a egg cooker that doesn't require dupes. So apparently if you put a raw egg into 70 degrees Celsius or above liquid or temperature, it cooks itself. So he made an auto egg cooker. It's really, well, I, I would, it looks pretty complicated, the diagram I saw. It's pretty cool though. So you put eggs in a container and then instead of hatching, they uh, they drop out as raw eggs. And then if the raw eggs drop into a hot place over 70 degrees, they just automatically cook. Which is pretty cool. I have some job promotions to do here. Reggie. Oh, I could have just moved him over. Ultimate. Gabe. Soup. Stinky. Soup. And stinky. And Captain G, I'll assign it from the top here. Any Anything that doesn't have a crown, I'll just get them to do it. Get them trained in everything. Except astronauts. The morale requirements for astronauts is too high, so. Oh, I gotta rehook this up here. And I gotta keep an eye on it or things are gonna get messed up. Actually, you know what I could do? I could have it vent here and then it wouldn't go any higher than there. That would be the smart thing to do. I think that'll actually work. If I could make a vent. So it'll fill up to this level and then we'll dribble some petroleum and then we'll seal it. But we also need a second vent that we'll put the oil in later. Once the petroleum is in there, right in here, with the vent. Let's use steel. So we'll pre-fill it, we'll put petroleum on top, and then we'll seal it, and then we'll fill it. And I think that'll work. Not not sure, but I think it'll work. 
Okay. What is this old wire for? Don't need this. Okay. What other project could we be doing? Star map. Oh, still taking them off of that rocket. Insufficient slime. We can solve that. Are oh, they getting popped eardrums in this little area? We have a lot of carbon dioxide in here. They're so slow in these suits. Look at them. It's cool that they have freedom of movement, but they're really slow. What else should we dig out? Let's just dig out this. And let's lock them out of here so they don't go in there. It's pretty laggy. Maybe we should lock them out of that whole area because it's just causing lots of lag. Our gold cooling has been working really well. When does this come back online? Oh, next activity point four. Okay. This has worked really well. Let's get all this gold out of here before it goes active again. I think I have a place for gold to go. Pretty sure. We'll find out if any dupes run up here. Yeah, there we go. And I think it's nice and cool. Gold is at minus 18. Oh yeah. Perfect. How much gold do we have now? Oh, only 3,900 kilograms. That's kind of sad. Thought we have more than that. Hmm. We got sour gas in the base. Yikes. Oh, what's up with this pump? Is it... Slowly getting rid of that CO2. We could put some more entertainment in there for them. Morale's around 30 to 40, above 20. They don't need any more morale. I was going to build a second base. I keep saying I'm going to do that. I still don't know where I want to put it. Somewhere near the top, I think. Oh, look at this copper. What the hell? What the hell? Oh, there's actually not that much of it. It'll slowly cool down. It'll go dormant, probably. Next dormancy. Oh, 37 cycles. That's a while. That's a while. The ceramic is at 600 degrees. When does that melt? 1800. Wow. That's interesting. Oh, there's some food in here that we haven't been getting. Let's get in there and get that. Free food. How much, uh... How many seeds do we have? Oh, we're using it up as we go. Sleep we grain 16. Oh yeah, that lag. Yeah, until they fix the pathfinding lag, I don't think jet suits are really maybe the best idea. Okay, I gotta put my robo miner up here. That's what I forgot to do last time. Right there. That's some power. Okay, how much power do we have on this line? 1.2, 1.56, doesn't really matter. I think I'll put it on this line though, because I want to build that out to the right more. Okay, here we go. Let's see this thing in action.
There we go. Beautiful. We need another robo miner here. Oh, the lag. It has to be steel, I think. Because it'll get hot in here eventually. Yeah, the hot regolith keeps these, like this tile, is 281 degrees. Two, bunker tile 280, robo miner 83. Surprised the heat's not conducting through. Bunker tile 295, robo miner 81. Huh. That's strange. What specific heat capacity? So the uh, it is it becomes a bit of a slog, a bit of a drag to do these final missions because they're so far away. Like fifteen cycles, that's a long time to wait. That should finish off all our research, though. Do I want to hook these up yet? Uh, yeah. Then we can rinse and repeat right to the edge of the map, which is right over here. I'm going to pause while I build this because it's so laggy. This is where the flying dupes would be good, but now I'm going to do bunker tile and then doors. I might as well just draw it all out. Draw it all out. Priority 8, that's fine. Yep. Actually, let's do Priority 7. Now, sometimes they jump up here when the doors are open and then they get stuck. Which is not very good. I haven't had any fatalities yet, though. Because the doors eventually close and they have quite a bit of air in their suits and then they run down here, down this ladder, which is broken. How much power are we getting out of this? 380. 380. Yeah, we're getting max power. Max power. Use heavy wire. Get that hooked up. Get even more power. I put a robo miner here too, because sometimes regolith would like bounce off, get and somehow get down this tiny little hole and block the door, and the dupes would get stuck. Well, that was not good. Oh, I got a bunch of steel trapped under here. I should probably get. Yeah, so we're just waiting around for the rocket. Uh, maybe I'll use super speed, just so we can get the rocket down faster. Let's check our research. We got... Uh, we're going to have to make another trip after this. I forgot this was 800 points. Let's check our little data bank thing. We have zero data banks. So yeah, we need, we're need. we going to get 250 off this next mission. We need three more trips. I think that's right. Yeah. So we're not going to finish it this episode. But we could reconfigure the rocket, actually. I said I wanted to do all the research first, but maybe we could do special cargo. And we could grab some Weezworts. Let's just check our space map here. Is there another ice planet we could go to? Yeah, we could go here. We could get research and Weezworts. Maybe. On the weight of that thing. What is the weight of the biological container? Oh, we. Oh, we already have it. Oh, yeah. The weight of that thing is. Oh, a thousand kilograms. Versus only 200 for the research module. So we probably could only put one of those in our rocket. I should use the tool, though, and find out. We'll build a cargo rocket after we get all the research done. 
We'll get Weezworts, and then we'll get some of these new materials. Like Iso Resin and Fullerene. So we'll put a cargo bay on, and we'll put a biological cargo bay. Hopefully we can get some stuff. But I think I have to, I think I'm going to wrap this episode up. I was going to finish off this project down here. But it's going to take a while. But the idea is fill it up with oil to this level. Drop some petroleum on top. It should float to the top and stay in this tile. Seal it up and then connect the oil to this pipe. The oil will try to occupy the tile that has petroleum, it won't work, so it'll squeeze down. That's the idea. And I'm not gonna make you guys wait through that. We'll just hopefully do it next episode. <laughs> okay, did we get all our fish out of here? What? They're not going in this trap. There's like three traps here. Maybe this tile is messing up. Let's get rid of that tile. Any eggs in there? No, no eggs. Still have a few in here. Let's grab them. Fish trap. What happens if we build them down here? <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, I'm going to wrap things up here. I'm loving this. <laughs> this thing. Let's check decor one more time. 508. Oh, it's the same. Okay. Until we trap a few more. Those poor fish. They love it, though. Hungry. I think the population should be maintained. If not, we'll... F we'll if the population starts to drop, we'll put some food in and they'll just keep multiplying until there's like a hundred of them there. And I don't think they can move. They're not... they don't seem to have any navigation. Even though there's two tiles. you think they'd be able to move from here to here. But they're not moving at all. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that episode. Uh, as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.